Good morning, everyone. Um, hopefully you can hear uh, our voices. As John mentioned, um, there is a chat box available for you. <clears throat> this is the part one webinar of the Avers Director's Toolkit, your first 90 days. In today's webinar, we will be presenting the program and tribal sections of the toolkit. Um, and the facilitators are myself, Daryl Joseph, and also Winona Reed. Um, so I'll give Winona a chance to introduce herself. She's also um, starting her <clears throat> return to Abertac here, and um, we're happy to have her. So some of you already know who she is out there in the Abers community. Good morning, everyone. My name is Winona Reed. I'm a member of the Navajo tribe. I um, used to work here a few years ago with the Capacity Building for American Indians Project, and I left for a few for about six years and worked in research administration for grants and contracts here at Northern Arizona University, as well as University of Arizona. I'm very happy to be back and to be part of this project. And, um, and if you have any questions, you can reach me by email or phone. Um, so that's about it. Great. Um, so as you can see, we have an agenda up there. Um, the introduction, so Winona's done hers, I'll do a brief introduction. I'm from the Hopi tribe, uh, from the village of Munkapi, and I represent the Coyote clan. Um, and I've been with Avertac for just um, over three years now, and uh, we are sure um, happy to be here on behalf of the Avers communities. Um, one of the things that we would like to share with you are the, next slide, John, the guidelines for the webinar um, include um, getting started. So uh, some of, for some of you, this may be uh, something um, old news to you, but for some of you, it may be new. Um, if you pay attention to the slide, there's a chat box uh, to immediately to the right. And within that chat, chat box, it'd be great um, if you're logging in with uh, more than one participant at one station, please share the names of other people joining with you. I'm also include your program today. And just for fun, a tribal greeting. Um, in our in Hopi language, we, we always say Lomata uh, Langwai, meaning it's a beautiful day. Um, and it's a great greeting. So if you can share with us your greetings and share the interpretation, um, we'll call those out as we go through um, the day with our webinar. Thank you very much. So next slide, John. No, mine did. So general guidelines for sharing uh, through the Zoom. Uh, uh, just just general things. So when someone is speaking and you have a question, we would appreciate if uh, you could use the box down below. Um, the purpose of our, our webinar today is really to share with you and show you where the tool toolkit is, how to use it, um, and in what context you might be using the toolkit for. Um, and as you're, you're presenting your questions or comments, um, John will be able to pull those up and make sure we address those as we go throughout uh, the webinar. Um, your experience is valued. Please share and allow time for others to share as well. <clears throat> and then every spoken, every voice that is spoken makes a difference in the Avers community. Um, so our people with disabilities are depending on you to share and contribute as we go through this process. Next slide. Um, Wayne made a good, a good point here. He said, please remember to <clears throat> mute the microphones or phones <clears throat> unless you are speaking. Okay. So to begin with, why, why an Avers webinar? Well, the purpose of this webinar, webinar as I uh, mentioned, is designed to share the Avers Director's Toolkit, your first 90 days, uh, to you by teaching you uh, where to locate it, how to use it, and what's inside the, the toolkit. Um, and the exciting thing about our, our webinar today is it's a culmination of collaboration between uh, the Avers programs that have received services from um, ITA, from our targeted assistance, from the universal services. And as we've gone through, uh, for as long as Avertech has been funded, um, 
the great thing that we've done is, is collecting our data and identifying some of those areas of need that you have. And in this case, looking at the AVERS directors um, and understanding that, you know, there's a continuum of experience that we have. We have directors who are brand new to the AVERS community, um, who have uh, a, a very low level knowledge of um, what AVERS is about, the grants are about, um, and, and working within tribal communities. Then we have AVERS directors who are um, very seasoned and have many years of experience um, who share information um, to, with the AVERS communities about their experience. And through that continuum, we've developed this toolkit um, to hopefully address some of these primary content areas that are important for directors to know. Um, so <clears throat> the idea is when you're talking about uh, your first 90 days, these are um, uh, contents, content information that um, all, all directors should be familiar with um, upon their first 90 days. And, and we address directors, but it's also helpful for counselors and other AVERS staff to be aware of the information that we will present today. Um, so for that reason, who should attend? It should be everyone within your AVERS staff. Um, in addition to um, any uh, tribal partners that you have there, any tribal council members that you want to invite, financial officers, um, grants and contracts departments. If you feel this is something that's important for them to know, please take the website address um, and share with them as well. Um, and I did cover what topics uh, will be covered today. We have our tribal section and our program section. The AVERS Director's Toolkit is made up of four content areas. And today we will be presenting two of those content areas. Next section, John. Um, so thinking about how we have shared information, um, both traditionally in our indigenous knowledge and context, um, and also within our Avers communities, we want to recognize that oral traditions are very important. And in doing so, um, we've included some of the areas of value that we have along respect, kinship, community of practice, redistribution, cultivating um, the knowledge, um, utilizing and implementing the knowledge of practice, um, taking some responsibility and in, in understanding how it's impacting our um, individuals with disabilities within our own community and recognizing that we are among a community. Um, and through this, through these connections, um, we maintain and sustain that practice of oral traditions. As you know, um, part of what we do as AVERTAC is to put a lot of things in print um, so that it's accessible and available for you as an AVERS community. But also the other value of working um, within the AVERS community as AVERTEC, we've learned that you know, the, the outreach that you do amongst one another by calling each other um, and asking about certain activities that you may be having challenges and various work, barriers with um, is also very important. So through that process, oral traditions are, are very important. Um, so we encourage um, one another that we continue to push forward with this um, in improving what we do in the Avers community. Slide. <clears throat> um, so thinking about that, the collaboration and partners, um, we've invited Northwest Indian College. Um, we have Elizabeth Bolin, who is on the line with us, um, and we've invited her to present um, an exciting toolkit that has um, just been released on a pilot program. So I'm going to pass it over to Elizabeth from Northwest Indian College to take it over from here. So hi everybody and thank you Daryl and the rest of the AVERTAC team. Um, hopefully everyone can hear me okay. So um, part of the reason why the AVERTAC team asked Northwest Indian College and in particular the Tribal Book Rehab Institute to talk with you today is because we are also have also developed a toolkit that works in conjunction with the new director's toolkit. So um, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Beth Boland, and I'm a professor at Western Washington University, and um, in partnership work with Laura Maudsley, who's the director of the Tribal VR Institute, so I'm the assistant director. 
And the financial management toolkit that we have developed, as I said, works in conjunction with uh, the new director's toolkit that the AmerTAC developed. So as you walk through their toolkit, you will see that they talk about some financial management topics, but not in the depth that we were asked to go into through RSA. So just to give an example or just to give an overview of our toolkit, and hopefully everyone received an email about this last week. If you have not, please um, let me or through Daryl know. And it looks like in the chat box, um, the link to the toolkit was put in there. So thank you. So as I said, we broke this up into six modules, taking directors through what they might need to be doing as they're thinking about managing their program. So in the first module, it's setting the foundation. And so in setting the foundation, you can look for information and resources necessary for building and maintaining new and existing tribal book rehab agencies. And so we go into different steps that you might need for that and then resources for that. Module two is building blocks. So this covers the essential structural components for tribal book rehab agencies. Things like regulatory considerations, reporting requirements, data management systems, and agency policies and procedures. Module three, setting up the financial management system looks at laying that critical foundation of that system to ensure that the Tribal Book Rehab Program is established and managed and that client services are provided within that established budget. Module four looks at spending agency funds, which examines established guidelines and regulations for fiscal management, as well as those policies and protocols that are implemented both at a tribal level and at a program level. Module five moves into more program management. So modules five and six look at program management from a fiscal point of view. So module five, caseload management. So information related to monitoring program cases and services and empowering staff to manage their caseloads. And then module six focuses on staff supervision. We recognized as we were putting this toolkit together that not everyone has had an opportunity to learn how to supervise professional staff. And so the information in this module is related to hiring, supervising, and the professional development of tribal book rehab staff. And so we um, have this as a standalone toolkit. We will also be putting this through our curriculum committee through Northwest Indian College and hope to be able to offer this as a two credit quarter long class starting spring semester, or spring quarter. So that would be roughly beginning of April through mid June. And so stay tuned for that. Okay, thank you, Beth. Yep, and have a good rest of your meeting. I'm gonna sign off if there are no questions. Just double checking. Any questions out there? Okay. There's few people on have um, given their tribal greetings. One is from Debbie Davenport. I don't know if she can say it herself. Halito, is that how you say it? Halito. Halito. And then um, someone from Tuba City, Yat e Bene, which means good morning in Navajo. Tugubeni. 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 Mike from Simone Ketchum. Hello. Okay, well, we just want to take some time to recognize all of you for sharing that. We're going to have to write it down and post it up on our walls and practice. <clears throat> okay. Okay, we're going to start off on our website. 
Um, one of the things that is important is that our website is abertac.org. First, I want to say also is that our grant, um, the Abertac program, is a cooperative agreement through the Department of Education, Office of Special Education Rehabilitation Services. Uh, we are currently in year four of our five-year grant. Uh, we welcome everyone to this toolkit. We're excited to have you on. Um, this, this, as Daryl said, this toolkit isn't just for new, um, new directors, but it's also for seasoned directors and staff to share. Um, I, I heard during the grant writing, or the, during the KNR conference, there was some staff that were gonna be recently um, retiring soon. So this is a great tool for succession planning that you can use. Um, our website. Can I go to our so, website? So we want to just take you from the Google platform, just for some of you who start at the very beginning, um, how to find uh, the website. So if you go to that, so a lot of you open up to that Google page, homepage. Is it there somewhere? Or? Yes. Yeah, so they have something familiar. So a lot of you will open up to this website. So it's as simple as typing in avertac.org if you don't have it linked somewhere. And there you'll see our information. So clicking on that tab will take you to our website. And there you go. And then okay. So if you see on right there is a link that says toolkits and all you have to do is click on that and it takes you straight to the, the toolkit. If you see that there are five tabs, one is program, the second is tribal, the third is state, federal, and lastly are resources. At the bottom of this page you'll see a brief um, history of the tribal VR programs. Um, I wanted to also put a plug out there for a coffee talk that Trevor Roanhorse is going to be conducting with the Northwest Indian College TVR um, Institute. And she's going to talk briefly about the KNR history. And that's, that's something that is also going to expand on this. And you can find that right there where John is pointing on the TVR Institute. Um, as a new as a new director, you may be coming from um, with a lot of experience in tribal VR. You may have moved up, advanced as a director. Maybe you were a counselor, or maybe you were working in the state VR system and have now started working with tribal VR. Um, there's a lot of emotion and a lot of um, maybe some anxiety and some excitement about working with a tribal VR program and as a director. And so this toolkit kind of helps with some of that, um, maybe some nervousness that you may be having. And it's just one of the tools that are available to you. Mm -hmm. So the first thing we're going to talk about is the program section. In, in that first paragraph, you are going to find the purpose of the ARVRS program. If you click on the highlight the second sentence. The purpose and design of the AVRS program is to provide culturally appropriate VR services to American Indian with disabilities who reside on or federal or state reservation, consistent with such eligible individuals, strengths, resources, priorities, concerns, abilities, capabilities, interests, and informed choice, so that such individuals may prepare for and engage in competitive, integrative employment that will increase opportunities for economic self-sufficiency. That is paramount to what this program is, and it's something that you can always go back to when when maybe you just are needing something that centers you and you're wondering as a new director, what did I get myself into? What am I gonna do? What am I, where am I going with this? And it's something to always have on the back of your mind and consider. Following the purpose statement are some of the important acronyms you will read or hear a lot in your tenure with the ARVRS program. 
You may even want to start your own list to share with other tribal collaborators, um, with your staff. Um, you've entered kind of like an alphabet soup of tribal VR. A lot of these acronyms you're, are, you're gonna be seeing and hearing on an everyday basis, and you may not know. Just the other day during one of our staff meetings, um, they, our staff was talking about ROI. And my, in my mind, I went to um, return on investment. And I totally immediately got confused about what, what is ROI, ROI. And I asked one of my staff, um, one of our, my coworkers, and he said, no, it's the release of information form that we have to complete. And I was like, oh, okay, now that makes sense. So now I know what ROI means for our program. And so, sorry. So this is just a short list of acronyms that you can also add to and something that you can just become familiar with. Following the acronym is a section on the GAN, the Grant Award Notification. And this is something that will be expanded on through the Northwest Indian College Tribal VR um, Institute. So, but it's something that you should look at know and highlight because there's important parts of that grant award notification. Lastly, in um, the area of the program section has six drop down menus. And I'm going to briefly talk about each one of those. This section is truly um, tied to your grant that was submitted and funded. And so as a new TVR um, director, it's important to read that grant, know that grant, and know what your goals and objectives are. The goals and objectives are paramount to what you need to be doing. So the first part is called services delivery goals and objectives of the, of the grant award. In your grant, there were eight sections that you wrote. The first one has to do for the need for project. Next is the significance. Third is the quality of project design. Next is project services. Then it's the quality of project personnel, the adequacy of resources, the quality of the management plan, and the quality of the project evaluation. These six tabs are about those sections of your grant proposal. Reminder that you can also um, ask questions during the section in the chat box if you'd like. So the first one is services, delivery, and goals and objectives. As a, new, as a new director, read those goals and objectives because that is what you're gonna be reporting on. Know what your numbers are and know what your outcomes are supposed to be. You also, you see in the middle of the screen is a chart called VR Processes Flowchart. You can also use this. You may even have your own programs flowchart or your tribal program. So if you click on that, John. Oops, oops. Okay, so in for this, the process is it gives you kind of a summary of what the process is when you're providing VR services. You have orientation to application, to intake, to eligibility, to case open, then on to IPE, individual plan for employment, employment, successful closure, case closure, tracking and post-employment services. So it's just a simple flow chart. Um, but as you, as you know, as you're providing services, it may not be as that, that simple. We all wish that, so you may be going back and forth and maybe you, you have developed an IPE and then you have to kind of go back and revisit that. Maybe there's employment and then you have to kind of go back. So this is just a, a simple process. You can print it, you can share it, adapt it, exactly. Okay, we can go back to the tool here. Also on this section are some questions that are, are just something to throw out there and make you consider what you need to kind of have 
in the back of your mind as you're, as you're on your road to becoming a seasoned director. These questions, as I was reading this website, um, for some of you who are writing for your next funding, some of these questions are kind of important for you as well as you're writing for your new grant. Also, there are some resources available to you. There's always the directors that are available to you. There's 88 directors. Your, your project officer is an important person. I remember, um, yeah, your project officer. And so my project officer in the past have always been so helpful and willing to provide information. Your project officer are the ones that are wanting you to succeed. They want you to be the best program out there. So always contact your project officer for any questions. They want you to succeed. We are also available, the Avery, Avery Tax Specialist. The so Northwest Indian College Tribal VR Institute is also available. Their classes are open to you. And then also KNAR Consortium Administrators for Native American Rehabilitation. The next is the management plan. The management plan basically tells you when you read that section of your grant, it's telling, it's, it's gonna tell you what your goals and objectives are, who's responsible for, that, for those parts of the grant and the program, what is the timeline and what your milestones are. So read that section because it will tell you, sometimes, oftentimes it will be in a chart form, a Gantt chart or a timeline. And that is something that you should look at, especially for your annual performance reports. Again, there's some more questions on this page that kind of makes you think about where, where you should be going with it and how you can become a more successful project. Let me scroll down. More questions. Okay, so click on the next, the next link. If you, um, if you look right there, John is pointing at the Toolkit Federal, and that's important because that, um, this toolkit kind of blends itself into other parts, as the, like the Federal, and that will be covered by Suzanne and Wayne next month. So that will take you to the federal portion of the toolkit. Next is the evaluation plan. This is a very critical and important part of your grant because you always want to be bettering yourself, um, improving and knowing what is going on. And in this section, there is the consumers, an example of a consumer satisfaction survey that was shared with us by the Hopi tribe. And when I reviewed this, it, it's a really, really good tool because it covers different aspects of your grant at different points of time, which kind of give, you know, it's just not taken at one section of your project. You can take, you can have a satisfaction survey during the orientation and intake process. You can also take the satisfaction survey, go to page two, yeah. during eligibility and IPE. And then you can take a satisfaction survey during closure. And this will give you an example or some information about what's happening at different parts of the VR process. Because you just don't want to know what is happening at the end of um, at the end of the VR process or the, you know as, as you're providing services. You want to know how that person felt at the beginning during orientation and intake. You want to understand that you, you know, that things were explained to them clearly and that the communication level was, you know, satisfactory. So all those things that are happening at the beginning are really, really important, as well as in the middle and at the end. So this is a good tool to use as a satisfaction survey. So the next form, so there's formative and summative. And then at the end, another form is the annual performance report exam. And so all of you will have received um, this kind of letter. This is an older letter, but there's still some information in, in this. And so when you're reading your grant, you want to understand what your goals and objectives are and what you're supposed to be doing because you're going to have to report on this. 
And some of the information you're going to be, you know, gathering throughout the whole VR process. And at the end, this is something that you have to report on in your annual performance report. So this is um, a, a few years old, but it still tells you what, you know, your executive summary and some of the data that has to be entered in. So this is um, something that you can review. The first is the, there's a letter. And then it talks, it explains to you what is in the executive summary, what needs to be in the executive summary. And it talks a little bit about the indirect, indirect cost rate, and that's something you have to always have because it's an agreement between the, the tribal entity and the federal government on what um, the indirect cost rate will be for your budget. And we can talk about that a little bit later. And then it gives you instructions on how to access um, and enter the, the actual report. And then this is the um, ED524B form. And then that's where you're going to enter your executive summary. And then more instructions. You can, you can close that one out. So again, there are some more. I'm not going to, you know, cover each question. But these are some questions that just kind of, you know, gives you some information on what you should be asking yourself as a new travel VR director. You know, does this evaluation plan include a consumer satisfaction survey to evaluate your program services? You know, you may have hired an external evaluator and that's, you know, a great way for someone to come in and have kind of like a 10,000 foot level of what's happening. Mm -hmm. yeah. and let me, let me add to that. The evaluation plan um, is also important for uh, other staff members in the program to review or just to have some consensus about how your program it will carry out the evaluation plan. As, as you recall, um, Nona shared the consumer satisfaction survey. That's consumer input. Um, when you think about that, how, who, will, who would be responsible for disseminating the surveys? Who's responsible for collecting it? How many times a year will you disseminate that? At what stages will you implement the survey? So when you're thinking about your evaluation plan, the idea is that you're building some consensus amongst your team members so that there's aware, an awareness about this when it comes time to reporting for your annual performance report. Um, and it's best practice um, that we suggest to AVERS programs that you're building this in a step-by-step -step process. So by the time the annual performance report um, is there, all your staff members are aware of their roles and responsibilities in contributing to meeting the expectations of, of your evaluation plan. So as Nona said, very important to go back to your grant approved grant proposal and review what it is you said um, you would do in your evaluation plan. The fourth is the fiscal management. This section includes the government publishing office code of federal regulations. This is also, this is my copy of, the, they call it the uniform guidance. And I have it highlighted, I have it tabbed. These are important as someone who is gonna be a director of a grant program to kind of know you have people, you know, you don't have to know this, this whole thing by heart, but if you have any questions about anything that your allowable costs and some of the questions, you know, sometimes you get a letter from your project officer or you have, something that you're reading as part of your grant, and it's about uh, you know, your fiscal management stuff, it's all based off of the uniform guidance. And the uniform guidance basically streamlines and col consolidates government requirements for receiving and using federal funds so as to reduce the administrative burden and improve outcomes. As, an, as a new travel VR director, it's important to know what your budget is 
and what's allowable and not allowable. You are providing VR services and you need to answer for those dollars. And sometimes you, you will be questioned by people within your tribe or your um, financial office. And so becoming aware of what you wrote in your, in your proposal and what you wrote in your budget narrative read those things because a lot of times people don't understand what those funds are really intended for. You're also required to provide a, a tribal match and how is that being tracked? So you have the, so you have your, your federal dollars that you are tracking or someone is tracking for you. And then you also have your tribal match. That's very important to, to be tracking. And you need to have discussions as a director with your financial people that these things are being, you know, appropriately handled. And it's important to understand how those drawdown dollars are important. The drawdown is important because those dollars are, are being tracked by the federal government. They're, they're wanting to make sure that those dollars are being used. And if those drawdowns are not happening, it, it, there's some problems that happen. So um, we're here to answer further on that and so is your project officer and it's important to make sure that your your federally negotiated indirect cost rate is updated I have run into sometimes when a when a when a tribe has a, you know it has lapsed and that causes some problems so it's important for those that have a federally negotiated rate to make sure that those are still in place The next is your design and collaboration. Collaboration is key to this project. So read what in your, in your grant, in the appendices, there's probably some letters and that people, people wrote letters and committed to what they said they're gonna do. And they're gonna collaborate with you. The state VR is gonna collaborate with you, maybe some other state and tribal agencies and programs. And so read those letters and have meetings and discuss what, what you are gonna be doing to make sure that your program is successful. You also may have included your advisory committee members and other stakeholders in an advisory committee. And so how is that working and who is on that and making sure that that section is being addressed. Okay. Lastly is your personnel. Your personnel is your greatest asset they're the ones who are, are out on the field. They're the ones who are doing what, um, they're, they're, they're accomplishing the goals and objectives. And so making sure that your, your, your personnel are taken care of and what, what are their training plans? Are they participating in the Northwest Indian Tribal um, VR Institute? Are they maybe receiving training um, at the state level? Um, are they going to the KNR conferences or other forms of trainings? But your, your, your staff is really important to the success of your program and you wanna take care of them. In this section, you kind of have a, a development action plan. This is just a suggestion. Okay, you can click on that. This is just a rep, rep, uh, recommendation to share and work with your staff on Maybe what, what, what are they gonna be evaluated on? What, what do they need and what tasks and target dates and specific things they need? And what is the progress toward that goal? So it's just a, you know, an example to use with your staff. Your tribal office may have already have, human, human resources office may already have something in place or you're um, bringing something that you use in, a, in another um, work environment. Oh, well, whatever. Go back to the toolkit. Okay, so the personnel section is important. It does also come with questions at the bottom and some recommendations of conducting, conducting some assessments and some of the things that you should look for so that your staff is also advancing um, with you. Again, that's the program section of the toolkit. Is there any questions? Anything to add on that? 
Um, so one, one encouraging um, thing, as we, as we know, again, um, in our experience as AverTech providing services, um, specifically from some of the services we offer through intensive technical assistance, um, we've learned over the years um, how programs are functioning at various levels. And, and we have programs who reach out to us requesting assistance for um, intensive technical assistance that have been funded for, say, two or three cycles. And, and that's perfectly okay. And oftentimes we find that some of those needs specifically are around this air content area of program-specific situations, such as, you know, how, how do we carry out certain aspects of our grant? Um, you know, looking at questions of whether or not, you know, they're actually completing the goals and objectives they stated in the grant and how do we get back on track or how do we collect data um, on these aspects and those are things that I I think are very unique to Avers programs and for that reason talking about program and including a section in the toolkit about program um, helps directors and all other staff become aware of those content area specific situations that you might want to be aware of within the first 90 days. Um, we also encourage directors um, to use this as an orientation tool for any new staff coming on board. Um, and then take this content area and then talk about it amongst your um, specific tribal situation in terms of what does it mean in terms of your tribal government? What department are you located in? And that's the section we're getting onto next, which is the tribal area. Um, but pr program management is, is a very unique to Avers communities, and this provides that unique content area for that. Um, so um, if there aren't any questions, we can um, jump into the tribal section of the toolkit. Okay, so um, American Indian Alaska Native Tribes, as you can see, John just clicked on the link um, tribal and it'll take you to this section. Um, so this section provides directors with information that is relevant to the job. Um, so if you're a new director and you're new to the tribe, um, these are areas that you, uh, we would suggest you become familiar with in terms of the tribal structure and any expectations that might be uh, there with your tribe. Um, so the areas that we cover include um, looking at your tribal organization, looking at your tribal government leadership, um, understanding the role of human resources, and then um, you know, a very important component, understanding the role of grants and contracts um, and your accounting departments. Um, so if, if you think about this, um, it's, it's very unique in the sense that we have over 573, I think that number is updated as well, at least 573 federally recognized tribes out there, and then 62 state recognized, and then, you know, as we all know, tribes that are neither state recognized or federally recognized um, that are up in operation. And so understanding that when we're breaking down these components of tribal organization, government leadership, human resources, each of our tribes are gonna be very unique. So understand that when you're um, perusing through this content section of the toolkit, that um, we've tried to make this broad enough so that it presents you with talking points to address in understanding how you're operating within your tribe. Um, we've included a link to um, the, the map provided by BIA, and it's really an interactive map. Um, if you look at that there, it just um, pulls up you know, a, a little um, wording there that you agree to, and it provides you the regions of BIA and then the um, locations of the tribal community. So if you click on that little um, tab at the upper left-hand part of the screen, um, it'll, oh, actually click on a region section. See, it'll list all the tribal leaders directories there. Um, so if you click on one, it'll take you to that location. Um, so 
Um, it's a resource for you. Um, as you know, that you know, oftentimes we operate within our own communities and um, being aware of what's happening across Indian country when we talk about AVERS programming um, and where they're located as, as useful information. We can go back to the tribal ticket. So speaking about the tribal organization, um, where is your AVERS program located within your organizational structure? Um, looking, providing services, we found that sometimes AVERS programs are housed within their tribal education department. Uh, sometimes we find that they're in their health department or their social services department. Um, so thinking about that, oftentimes it, it, it will impact um, the processes you're involved with in collaboration with other tribes that are, I mean, other programs that are housed within that department. It may also necessitate you as a program to reach across departments to determine if you need to collaborate with a program that may provide, say, a comparable service that you can refer a consumer to. So what does that mean for you when you're talking about where you're located within your tribe's organizational structure? Um, and so as a new director, when you're coming in, um, what is the chain of command within your tribe? Um, who do you report to? When we are um, working with tribes who re request intensive technical assistance, that's one of the questions we will ask at the front end um, in terms of who, who needs to be involved in the meetings with AVERTAC in addition to the AVERS directors. Um, for that reason, uh, that for the reason that we enter into a formal agreement, is it necessary that there are un other entities that should be aware of the agreement we're entering into as part of ITA? Um, in the same respects, when you're submitting reports, um, reviewing reports, you know the approval of reports. Um, what is that chain of command? Um, talking about your staff. Talking about the you know, AVERS staffing, um, when you're working with your VR counselors, are there other individuals that need to sign off on a professional development plan? So it's very important that you become familiar with uh, the organizational structure um, and become aware of that chain of command and the relationships it creates or causes you to develop um, to operate as an AVERS program successfully within your tribe. Um, AVERS program and staff roles and responsibilities. Um, uh, all of you may know that as part of your uh, grant proposal, you include a proposed um, projection of who you want to staff within your program, their, their roles and responsibilities. Um, and then it, we all should be aware of how those specific positions will contribute to achieving um, the goals and objectives as a whole in your proposal. And so in becoming familiar with your five-year grant proposal is an important step um, because as uh, Winona outlined earlier, it provides the key, key components of goals and objectives, um, the culturally appropriate services you say your program will provide and VR practices. Um, you're proposing a management plan um, of who's responsible for what. Um, your methods for program evaluation, um, any federal and non-federal budgets, um, and your budget justifications, and then your special application requirements. So, so this, this is the content of your five-year approved grant proposal. Um, and to no one's fault, sometimes I think as directors, we can um, take on that responsibility and say, I feel like I need to be responsible for this. So, so you review that grant in isolation, but we recommend that you share that among your, your, your staff members. Um, and sometimes if you are a very new to the community and to the program, your staff members will be able to supplement some of the information that might inform um, how you are doing on your grant proposal. Um, so moving down to the bolded letters there, the reports you are required to submit to tribal administration and tribal council. So what is their content specific information? 
how do you need to report that? Um, and then also tribal government leadership, that next drop down menu there. Um, who is your leadership? Um, what kind of language um, do you use when speaking about your tribal leadership? You know, we know that there are many of our communities who still have a traditional leadership structure. Um, that, that go to the elders council. Um, we have some of our tribal communities who are, you know, refer to their leader as a chief, those who refer to them as presidents, as chairman. Um, what's the appropriate language to use in terms of your leadership structure? Um, and becoming familiar with that would be uh, very important. Um, and then also your tribe's elected officials. Um, what are what are their roles and responsibilities? As you know, um, and as we know, as Abertac, we in in our services, oftentimes we'll, we will work on say policies and procedures, and we have programs who indicate to us that they need to report this and get approval by the council. Um, so it's a very integrated process when you're talking about it a funded Avers program within a tribe um, and understanding the role of the tribal government and organization structure um, so that you're, you're, you're helping your program become successful by alleviating these barriers that may present themselves um, within your, your tribe. And add yeah. that there's consistent education and outreach to these levels of government because they're the ones that are going to be signing off on the grant mm -hmm. and who are going to be supporting you with your match dollars. And so it's, it's going to be constant education and outreach. Yes. Thank you, Winona. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I, I, does that um, make sense to everyone? If you can respond to the chat box, tick, click yes. Uh, maybe present a point that doesn't make sense because we'll come back to that um, after we're done here. What, what do you need more explanation on? Um, that would help us very much. So we know that you're, you're still there and you're not falling asleep. <laughs> um, thank you. I see Rachel Allen say yes, Petra saying yes, Marie saying yes, Shelly. Thank you. Yes, from Janet Kimber Olson. Thanks. Yes. Um, thank you, everyone. Thank you. I'm glad you're all there. Um, so jumping into the human resource section. Um, okay, so human resources. I'm sure all of you that are um, chatting up can say a lot about your human, human resources there. And again, it, it's that same thing. You know, there's a continuum of experiences related to human resources. Oops. Um, so in, in this section, um, you know, we know that they're res responsible for maximizing pr the productivity of programs. Um, in a lot of our Avers program cases, they help us with recruiting, approving um, uh, job roles and responsibilities for a specific position. Um, you know, meeting certain criteria for employment. Um, what are they doing at a tribal level? So thinking about that, this is one of those departments, as Winona said, um, is so important to develop a relationship with. Um, you know, as, as much as we have turnovers within our own communities, you know, it's very difficult um, to find um, sometimes qualified people to fill a position of a VR specialist. Sometimes you're reaching out to your project officers, asking them for approval um, of someone who may not have all the necessary um, uh, professional development criteria, but you're developing a professional development plan so you can get them up to that level. Um, so when you're doing that, there's this integration and need to communicate with your human resource department. Um, and establishing good communication strategies, very important. Um, providing relevant information about your Avers program staffing. You know, as we know, um, your key personnel include your director and include your VR counselor. Um, and RSA is very involved in terms of approval of those positions. Um, so within that process, human resource needs to know 
that there's another partner here uh, they need to be aware of, um, which includes RSA. Um, determining your HR's procedural requirements to fill vacant positions um, is important. Um, so again, you know, just emphasizing that human resources is a very important piece of um, a tribal program, an important piece of your Avers program. Um, also keeping in mind that with key personnel, we also have to be mindful that there's another partner that we need to develop these um, positive working relationships with. Can I add to this? Yes. Human resources? And also you're going to be doing a lot of education and outreach to your human resources because they're going to be, um, there's going to be discussions about accommodations and what, how they're going to be hiring people from, that are coming from your program. And so it's a lot of a still more education and outreach for your human resources because they're going to be experiencing some of the consumers that are going to be coming in and getting hired by the tribe. And so talking about accommodations and, mm -hmm. and, and um, employing people with disabilities. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, Suzanne pointed out a very important question, and this is the reason why we're, we're presenting this information about developing positive relationships. Um, you know, we understand that sometimes um, there are challenges and barriers in working with, with other tribal departments. And, and we have to start somewhere. Um, and I think part of that is, you know, when you're understanding, you, you have a good understanding as a director, as any ABER staff member about the roles and responsibilities of your ABERS grant. Um, and really have a true understanding of how you plan to carry that out. Um, then it's a lot easier to engage in conversations with um, programs like the Human Resources Department um, with a conversation about how they can contribute to making your program successful because it is a representation of the tribe. And so if those challenges and barriers do exist, it has to start somewhere. And, and sometimes that initiative um, we'll start with you as a director um, to begin that conversation about um, addressing the support and assistance you need um, from a human resource department, but, um, and vice versa, how can they support you with what you need moving forward? Um, and developing some plans, so regular meetings with your human resources, so, so you're doing some updates. Um, with one another, you know, informative meetings, orientation and training about the neighbors program. Um, those are a few things you can do uh, to begin with reducing the barriers that may present themselves as you're working and engaging with your human resource department. Um, <clears throat> so jumping on to the grants and contracts um, and accounting departments, section um, the, the tribes grants and contracts departments within your tribe may be standalone um, or may be combined with other departments such as your finance department um, it may yeah it may everything may be housed in one department you know it depends on how your 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 government is is structured but in any case when we're talking about tribes and Tribe, the Tribes Grants and Contracts Department, they're responsible for helping your program be successful. Um, so again, same thing with your Human Resource Department, it's developing a relationship with them is so important. Introduce yourself to them. Meet with the individual um, who is responsible for assisting you manage your grant. Um, develop that positive work, working relationship. Become, become familiar with um, their processes Establish a process that works between uh, their department and your department for guidelines, reporting timelines, and methods of communication. Um, I'm sure Winona can speak to this as well, um, working in that department that, you know, sometimes people who are working within the grants and contracts department welcome programs who are funded to reach out to them um, about any questions or challenges that they have or clarity about requirements for reporting. Um, and when, when that occurs, then that's developing that positive working relationship so that it's easier 
to address these challenges as they present themselves. You know, do you want to add anything? I totally agree with what Daryl is saying is that the people in your grants and contracts department really are wanting you to succeed because it's it's it it just trickles out to other departments and and it can trickle into other grant funding that your tribe can apply for. And so sometimes even just uni reading the uniform guidance may not make sense as a tribal VR director. And so talking it through with your representative and your grants office can further clarify some of those questions that you have and talk about what's allowable and not allowable and how you can go about it. And they're the ones that are, are probably the ones that are signing off. They're the authorized um, representative signing off on your grant and signing off on your reports. And so it's really important to know each other's timelines and what their timeline is on, on either submitting a grant or submitting a report or talking with your, pro, your pro, program officers. So it's a really um, important relationship that you have with that office. Great, thank you, Anana. <coughs> Um, again, out to the Avers communities, it'd be great if you can offer a small comment or two about your relationships with um, the tribe's accounting department and maybe anything that um, you'd like to share, um, and we'll recognize that as they come in. Um, so looking at your tribe's accounting department, um, you know, they're, they're key have, they have key roles and responsibilities ensuring that there are there's sound financial planning, reporting and controls and auditing. Um, and again, being that you know we're all diverse tribal communities, um, there may be different processes in place, but nonetheless, um, there is uh, there's a checks and balances oftentimes within your tribes that account for expenditures. And as Avertech, we've learned that, you know, sometimes this comes in the way when, we, when we're addressing challenges and barriers about um, the approval of consumer services, you know, and working with the tribal accounting department um, and orientation about what's appropriate and not appropriate to be funded um, or, or um, paid for um, by the tribes. And so, when we're talking about you know your tribal accounting department establishing a relationship with them is just as important as it is establishing a relationship with your human resource department um, because it's through that process that you're developing some consensus um, with that firm grounded understanding about your Avers grant uh, program and regulations about you know required services for your consumers that you'll have to communicate with your accounting department um, and understanding that the accounting um, folks um, are also responsible for other programs and projects. And so as Winona mentioned, you know, they want us to be successful. Um, and if, if there are challenges and barriers that exist, um, it ultimately may impact um, consumer services. And that's something that we want to prevent as much as we can. And so developing those relationships and developing some processes um, that you have consensus with, um, with, you know, maybe coordinated um, updates, you know, intervals of, of meetings where you're meeting on a quarterly basis um, and identifying agenda items that they would like to learn about AVERS and, and fiscal management and vice versa. You know, what are they working with? Um, what are some of the challenges um, that they're dealing with? So that we have some understanding and some empathy of one another's programs so that we can have uh, a good working relationship. Um, so, you know, looking at the, those four bullet points, it's the same thing we covered, um, you know, communicate openly, um, learn about your accounting department's procedures and requirements to fulfill requests for procurement of programs and consumer goods and services. Have a clear understanding with your account manager about allowable costs for all program expenditures. Develop a procurement process with your assigned account manager to purchase program and consumer goods and services in a timely manner. Um, you know, this is, I think, the other thing that comes up as we're presenting this um, is that we all often have questions about confidentiality. Um, and, and the role of your accounts department to 
be aware of consumers who are requesting these services. And confidentiality is a very important piece that um, accounting departments need to be aware of um, so that you as a program are maintaining that for your consumers. Um, so that is the last drop down menu of our tribal section of the toolkit. Um, and as you may have noticed, unlike the program section, we don't have any specific links to tools, um, primarily because um, we have over 500 tribes out there and 88 tribes who are funded. Um, and they don't all operate the same, same way. And so the information, again, as presented, is broad enough for you to take and, and utilize within your own circles there with your staff to discuss what does this mean for you at a tribal level? Um, and how is it going to help you at, with your program um, provide effective consumer services and improve your employment outcomes and improve the number of consumers um, who are coming into your program? Um, so with that, um, I wanted to respond to Simone, okay. Simone Ketchum. She wrote, with our accounting department, we have a few minor issues that we are in the process of working on. I found that communication and explaining has helped a lot. And that's really key is communication. And sometimes an email may not be the best way. Sometimes it's just talking to someone over the phone or in person, um, bringing, bringing charts, bringing your grant, um, bringing a success story. And sometimes that kind of takes the walls down. And so communication is key with all, all of these resources that Daryl talked about. Right. Um, so what I would, uh, Janet, I, I see your comment. Thank you for mentioning required services for consumers because when we process check requests, it causes questions from finance about allowability because they are usually seeing it from a financial perspective and not VR perspective. Thank you, Janet. Exactly why um, communicating about, you know, the roles and responsibilities of Avers programs is so important um, and updating that communication so that we have a consensus moving forward. Um, thank you, Janet. Um, so going back to our website, um, I do want to recognize we have our project officer, um, hopefully who is still there, um, Kristen. Um, are you still there, Kristen? She, uh, hey, I'm here. Oh, great. So um, I'm going to invite Kristen um, to join us for a few minutes um, uh, to take us back to the beginning of our presentation. We invited Northwest Indian College to present information about the um, financial management toolkit uh, that they're piloting now, um, in addition to our toolkit, which is the new director's toolkit. Um, and uh, I know, Kristen, you'd like to share a few things about both those toolkits, so please share with us. Well, thank you for the opportunity. Can you, can everybody hear me okay? Perfectly. Yes. Excellent. Hi, Wynona, it's good to hear your voice. Well, thank you everybody for taking the time to join NAU and their work with the AIVR TAC today. I apologize for coming on. I snuck in a, um, a few minutes in, so I missed Beth Bolin. Um, just as a, as a quick note, if I may, most of you, um, if not all of you, may be aware that Dr. Finch retired at the end of the year. And in the midst of all of that, the floor where OSER's RSA is housed underwent a renovation. And we just have all physically returned to the office as of last Friday. But unfortunately, as you can imagine, with a renovation, there are still some technical challenges. So I don't have a working phone, my internet's a little spotty, and I'm on a cell phone, which may or may not cut out while I'm talking here. So I thank you for bearing with me and thank you for the opportunity to just thank you for your time today. And I, I'm i very fortunate because I've been able to work with both the AIBR tech um, on the new director toolkit and the Institute through Northwest Indian College in their partnership with Western Washington University on the financial management toolkit. 
And so I apologize if, if I'm repeating um, some of the information you heard earlier on the webinar, um, but I wanted to make sure that the audience today has a clear understanding about the differences in the toolkits. We want to make sure that um, you all know these resources are available, who the intended audience is, what each toolkit is intended to do or attempting to do, and reduce any kind of confusion or frustration on your part. And so if you, as you are um, orienting yourself to the new director toolkit and um, you find that you have questions or concerns or you're familiar with the financial management toolkit and, and we've got some conflicting um, tools or resources or information, please, um, please don't hesitate to bring that to our attention. These folks, both grantees, have worked incredibly hard on both products, and we recognize that sometimes when you look at something a hundred times, uh, you sort of reach a point where you're not going to catch everything. And so um, we do acknowledge that um, there are likely, we're likely need some corrections and updates as we move along. And I also need to acknowledge that my two colleagues, Sonia Turner and August Martin, who are fantastic, um, as you can imagine, um, we're, we're orienting ourselves without Dr. Finch's presence, and Sonia and August are a tremendous resource to me, I, as I know to all of you, and they are still going through both toolkits. So um, I recognize what my limitations are um, with the programs and um, still being sort of the new kid on the block here. Um, and so I, there, in terms of my input and feedback, I know that there, I could only go so far. Um, and so Sonia and August really are the, the experts in our AIVRS programs, and they are going to continue to go through both toolkits. And I share that just so that folks know we may need to make some corrections and updates going forward, and we'll certainly keep you apprised of that. Um, for the financial management toolkit, um, we're doing a soft launch right now, kind of similar to what we did with the new director toolkit a couple of months ago. What I mean by a soft launch is that it went out to the directors, but we have not completed a wide dissemination effort that is intended. I needed to give my RSA colleagues a little bit more time to review um, and, and as you can imagine, um, November and December and the beginning of January have been um, particularly uh, crazy here, crazier than usual with the, with the renovation going on. So um, just please allow us that time to make sure we get these right and we will, you know, let you know when we need to make some changes or updates. I do want to acknowledge that there are some themes and some subject matter that may overlap between the toolkits. But I think for me, um, having worked with both of them, that the, the new director toolkit is really to give the new directors or, or anyone that, that could value from a refresh um, an opportunity to, to orient to the program. And so there's a lot of um, information shared bro broadly with you um, in that orientation fashion. Whereas from, from my opinion, the financial management toolkit is intended to be a little bit more in-depth to provide examples and resources to support effective financial management um, of your grant. So again, there may be some overlapping themes um, and material. Certainly, if we are conflicting in any way between the toolkits in terms of what we're sharing with you, please let us know. We might have missed something. Um, but that's how I see the, the difference between the two. And I hope you do too. And um, I, I can't say enough, um, feedback is so important to both of these grants. They both have evaluations underway and we're not gonna know whether or not we're meeting your needs if we, if we don't have some information and feedback from you all. So um, please, uh, when the AIVR TAC and when the Institute are reaching out, if you could take some, take a few moments or find a, a time, um, a good time for you to get back to them um, so that they can do what they need to do on their end to um, provide to RSA information about quality, relevance, usefulness. Are we meeting a particular need or challenge? Did we help you address a particular need or challenge? 
Um, how often are you using the toolkit? Perhaps for what purposes, if there's a particular section um, or piece of information that was useful to you. If you wouldn't mind even sending the AIVR attack an email um, and saying, hey, I was in state resources today and I used X, Y, and Z, um, or this particular resource helped me address X, Y, and Z, we would really appreciate that. Um, and we know there's probably still some more work to do, so we invite you um, and welcome um, constructive thoughts and feedback. This, these toolkits are for you. My understanding from Dr. Finch is that um, it's been some time since the new director toolkit has been updated and available, and this was um, an, an area that he wanted um, the AI Veritech to explore, and, and it was already on their radar. Um, and for the financial management toolkit, we had heard from so many of you between the work of the AI VR attack and the work of the Institute that financial management was an ongoing um, area for continued support from RSA. So um, our intent was to, we know we're not gonna address everything. We know, we know there's still places um, where you have needs. And, and so hopefully these two are, hopefully we're off to a good start um, and please, um, again, please support the evaluation efforts for both grants. Thank you so much to NAU and to the folks at the Institute, um, and thank you all of you again for your time. Thank you, Kristen. We appreciate you being on board with us and sharing some information. That's very helpful. Um, so, so in regards to our toolkit, John, if you can go back to our window. Um, we just completed the tribal section of the toolkit. And as you can see there in the screen, there are two more sections, the state and federal. Um, and we are tentatively planning that for February um, to present that. And uh, Suzanne and Wayne will be on board with us to do those two sections. Um, but before we move on, I wanted to go up to a couple of comments uh, from Tom Cyrus. Uh, relating to our last section presentation, he said, we have an excellent relationship with our accounting department as well. Communication is certainly important to keep this relationship going. Thank you, Tom. And then we have Amanda. Um, I request monthly to quarterly draw down history too. That keeps them on their toes. So that's um, good advice and guidance. Thank you, Amanda. Uh, let's see if there's anyone else that has... No? Okay, so um, if there aren't any more questions, um, we are about 10 minutes out from the completion of this webinar. Um, we'd like to share with you in um, reference to evaluation, we have an end of event survey um, that is going to be shared with you on our chat box. Um, if you could click on the link and um, when we are, we are done with our webinar, um, complete the end of event survey. John will also send an email um, with the link, so you have it via email. Um, are there any last questions or comments um, from the Avers community? I'm gonna do a little, uh webinar experiment right now, uh, considering that we have never unmuted everyone at the same time. Okay. Um, and just to prepare for maybe future conversations online, I'm just gonna unmute all and okay. see what we get from there. So everyone, please be ready for your microphones to be live. And also there's gonna probably be a lot of background noise. So if you can keep your noise uh, in your office or at your desk to a minimum, we should be able to potentially have a conversation with everyone live at one time. So let me go for that. Currently, everyone. Hello. Hello. Hey, do I have to ask the chair? As well. So what's happening is there, your microphone, whoever it is that's that's causing this echo is your microphone on your computer is picking up the speaker audio. So it'd be interesting to see where this goes. Um, but we'll, uh, if, you, if you would like, put your questions in the chat as well. 
Um, and if you would like to stay muted, just mute your line uh, from your computer or from your phone. Okay. Oh, good morning. This is Janet Weed. Hi, Janet. Hi, Janet. You sound perfect. Yes. Oh, yes. Thank you, Winona. I needed to hear that. <laughs> hey, Winona, I'm still around, right? <laughs> good to hear from you. Yes, that was very and very informative. Uh, I liked all the you know the format and the information that you're sharing. And look how many years I just want to mention this. Look how many years it's taken from um, from the inception of you know talking about things, and now you've really presented this great project. Thank you. I'm looking forward to that. Um, the director's toolkit. Great. That's great. Thank you, Janet. Anyone else want to add or share anything? Hi, this is Carol from Hannibal. Great job. Thank you, everybody. Great. Thank you, Carol, for joining us. Yes, excellent. I wanted to also talk about just real briefly about the um, resources section. Um, I think that's ever evolving. We're going to be, I think we're going to be adding to that. Mm -hmm. There's a fifth tab on this website. This is the resources. It's still a work in progress, but I think that it's, it's, a, it's a good start. Also, I wanted to remind people that we're following up these two webinars with a virtual talking circle, and we're going to be discussing the ARVR Director's Toolkit and it's going to be a time for all of us to come together. And I think it's another form of making sure that this, this tool is the best that we, that we can provide to you guys. Yes. yes thank you. This is Janet again. You know, we um, completed our um, report, this last one. Yes. When I seen your, the fifth button there, resources, what immediately came to my mind was, aha, that's where we can put in like a shared cost from another outside resource. That was just a thought. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Daryl and Winona. It was a great, um, this is Suzanne. Your uh, webinar was great, very informative, and you gave everybody an opportunity to participate, which is great. Um, cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Before we sign off, also um, that, you know, we're sharing the toolkit today, but please take notice of the website on your screens. Um, we have modules available um, for orientation for, it, for everyone in your staff. Um, we also have <clears throat> other things under the resources tab available fact sheets, practice guides, our newsletters, um, additional webinars. Um, please know that that's available for you um, to use at any time. Um, there are things that we offer in terms of your ability to print off. Um, if you need supplemental information or have questions of things on our website you don't quite understand, feel free to give us a call or send us an email because um, Again, reiterating uh, what Kristen shared, we're here for you and, and we want to do a good job um, serving you as the Avertech Center. So um, we're all happy you all joined us today. Thank you. <clears throat> this is Burdette. I want to thank you also from Rosebud the Tribal Program. Thank you, Burdette. It's good to hear your voice. <laughs> yeah, same here. <laughs> Hello, Daryl. This is Charlotte McCurtain with the Comanche Nation. Hello, Charlotte. Yeah. I'm just enjoying all the information. I can't wait to really go through it more thoroughly. But uh, we appreciate Avertech and in particular the assistance that you were giving to our tribe. Good job. Thank you, Charlotte. Sounds like we're cut off. No, Are we over? No. no. It sounded. John is adding to the chat box again um, the survey link. If you're accessing this through your computer, please click the link. 
um, go directly to the survey. Okay. Thank you, everyone. You all have a wonderful day. Have a good week.